the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a living hope in the power of forgiveness and of love. Beloved, we are come together in the presence of Almighty God to offer our worship, praise and thanksgiving, to make confession of our sins, to pray for others as for ourselves, that we may know more truly the greatness of God's love and show forth in our lives the fruits of his grace. O God, God our Father, we have sinned against thee in thought, word and deed. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours. Have mercy upon us, we beseech thee, and cleanse us from our sins and help us to overcome our faults. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God, Lord grant unto us pardon and remission of all our sins time for amendment of life and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the 23rd chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said, Alas for you, scribes and Pharisees, you utter frauds. For you pay your tithe on mint and aniseed and cumin, and neglect the things that carry far more weight in the law, justice, mercy, and good faith. These are the things you should have observed without neglecting the others. You call yourselves leaders, and yet you cannot see an inch before your noses. For you filter out the mosquito and swallow the camel. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. 
because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Almighty and everlasting God, who art always more ready to hear than we to pray, and not want to give more than either we deserve or desire. Pour down upon us the abundance of thy mercy, forgiving us those things whereof our conscience is afraid, giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask, but through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give. That both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father and everlasting God, who safely brings us to the beginning of each day and helps us to do what is righteous in thy sight, lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, and by thy great mercy defend us from perils and dangers of day and of night. For the love of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Jesus said, Alas for you, scribes and Pharisees, you utter frauds. The 23rd chapter of St Matthew is one of the most lively in the whole Gospel narrative. Jesus unbridles his tongue and publicly has a go at the religious leaders of his time, the high and mighty of the religious establishment. You know, the bishops and deans and moderators of the General Assembly and assorted pompous potentates in black cassettes, so to speak. He was voicing his instinct as an abrasive rebel and defender of the cowed and browbeaten common man. Marvellous invective. And yet it ends with Jesus' beautifully sad lamentation for Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. How often have I longed to gather your children around me like a bird gathering her brood together under her wings. O Canterbury, O York, dispense the love of the compassionate Christ, gathering the brood under the wing. Lovely image, that. Well, is it right sometimes to speak out against what seems to us to be intolerant, hurtfully judgmental? Yes, I think so, even though it carries the attendant risk of being hurtfully judgmental ourselves in so doing. I know it's not the appropriate season of the year to quote Robert Burns, or is it? But I'm going to anyway. From his address to the Anka Gid, i.e. his address to the Oh So Pious and Holy, it begins, O ye who are so good yourselves, so pious and so holy, you've naught to do but mark and tell your neighbours faults and folly. And it continues, Hear me, ye venerable core, as counsel for poor mortals that frequent pass deuce wisdom's door for glicked bodies portals. 
And then it ends, wonderfully summing it all up. Then gently scan your brother man, still gentler sister woman. Though they may hang a kenning rang, to step aside is human. Now this address is a biblical paraphrase in the vernacular by Burns of Solomon in Ecclesiastes 7.16 and it sets the tone for what will follow. Ecclesiastes tells us, be not righteous over much, neither make thyself over wise. Why shouldst thou destroy thyself? Ecclesiastes 7, by the way, is a chapter which, like many in the wisdom books of the Old Testament, is packed with aphorisms to frame and to hang on your study or your bedroom wall. For example, it is better to heed the rebuke of a wise person than to listen to the song of fools. Like the crackling of thorns under the pot, so is the laughter of fools. This too is meaningless. Great stuff, eh? But back to Burns, who writes, I have often coveted the acquaintance of that part of mankind commonly known by the ordinary phrase of blackguards. Sometimes, farther than was consistent with the safety of my character. Those who, by thoughtless prodigality or headstrong passions, have been driven to ruin, I have yet found among them some of the noblest virtues, magnanimity, generosity, disinterested friendship and even modesty in the highest perfection. For all his folly, for all that and all that, a man's a man. There's a measure of good that resides within him. And there is something, perhaps a lot, to respect and to value. Mind you, amongst the brother men who need to be gently scanned are, of course, the men and women who are the leaders of the church and who very often are trying their best in difficult circumstances. And as an aside here, we could broaden the clientele under examination and talk about political and civic leaders of our land. The ministers and secretaries of state for this and that, and indeed, the Prime Minister himself. He's a man too, with a dog and a bairn and her indoors. Anyway, Burns of Asher in his address to the Ankh of Good and Jesus of Nazareth in full stride in Matthew 23, they make the point that it is this natural sympathy and compassion that are important in society, not self-righteous condemnation. So, newspaper columnists and you and me, we should take note of that, don't you think? Amen. As you go on your way, go forth into the world in peace, be of good courage, Hold fast that which is good, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, render to no man evil for evil, love, honour and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.